the birds were part of the coming and goings of people. And it's the coming and goings of people and their interaction with one another that can begin to take the pressures off the uh, mistrusts that we have. It's not just a matter of whether a person is a landscape painter, a colorist painter, an abstract painter, whatever, whatever. Um, it, it's just that it is going to work on you. And, and it's going to work on you in the most benevolent way. That, that is, that nature, which was here before we came, and if we don't do two silly things will be here long after we've gone, has its opportunity to speak to you, to remind you of the timelessness of things, to remind you nevertheless of change, of you know the, the sun coming out and the clouds going across the sun and the early morning uh, lights of the sunrise and of the clear stars and the dead of night. The things that people, I suppose, have, uh, ha have realized in, in modern song, in classical uh, song, in, in, in music for time immemorial. But each of us has to find it anew. And increasingly in the urban world, it becomes difficult. Uh, and so, uh, this is a place where we can re be reminded of the great depth that we can touch on, the great depths we, we can touch on that, that come from the aeons of time. Painting is its own language, and, um, and therefore a, a verbal explanation is, you, you could argue, is, is superfluous. But the, uh, the, that's, a, I think, a rather simplistic uh, answer to the problem, because there are other factors that you need to consider in this, and that is that the artwork not only explains something, but it also protects things. It, uh, it begins to put veils over perceived truths, in a, perhaps in a way so that the truths don't get made too common, uh, maybe so the truths don't get damaged, uh, and, and, and maybe so that the uh, the viewer uh, is expected to work. If if the thing is of of some sort of relevance, then maybe people have to work at it to get those re relevances. Otherwise, they don't get the relevance. They might get the edge of the message, but not the heart of the message. You don't make a mistake, you just have a suggestion of something that you hadn't thought of before. You work through your life hoping that what you do and what you make is, is something special and, and, and unique, that it maybe hasn't said, been said this, shown this way before or for a long time or, or whatever. Um, and, and therefore you start eventually doing things in a very special way that carries that uniqueness. So you have the uniqueness of the idea that you're trying to follow and you have the uniqueness of the way in which you do it. But the negative side of that, if you're not careful, is you fall into a formula. So, 
I've moved along here, and as I've moved along here, I've just slightly changed the colours that I've used. And what I was saying was that I, I, I invent this as I go along. When I started this, uh, for instance, I wasn't exactly sure after I'd put the first uh, brown lines in um, running horizontally what the vertical ones were going to be. I did know that I was going to do them vertically but um, and, and that is something of a, uh, a process that I quite often do. Uh, you know this, uh, this springs from the concept of Tarnico border and of course it's not a Tarnico border, A, it's a, it's a piece of painting, but um, B, a Tarnico border was a knotting technique, not, not the uh, sort of thing that I'm uh, doing with this. What is happening is that a, a painting is a way of carrying your thought forward, and until, to some extent, until you've got it down on the paper, you, uh, you're not quite aware of what you're thinking about. And once it's down, you see what it is that you're thinking about, and so that leads you into the next thought. So you put that down, which leads you to the next thought, and so forth. So hopefully, at the end of the journey, you've got to somewhere where you had never been before. And I think that's quite important. It, it, it's very much a new journey each time. And so you get the feeling that you've never learnt anything. <laughs> I suppose it's not so much the feeling that you've never learned anything. You might say it's the hope that you've never learnt anything. Because that gives you good reason to start off tomorrow with another painting. If you think you're pretty clever and you can always do it, then, you know, why bother? And, and if that were really so, the, the formula for doing the magical piece of art would have been worked out millions of years ago in humankind because human beings were always pretty smart fellas. Well, I like to think that each picture is a bit of an answer to, to somewhere that I've been going or, or been. Inside yourself, you're, you're only really comfortable when you're bent over like this and you've got the pen and the ideas are going down. And... I was going to say, I think we can control our so-called human attributes. We're, we're, we're not as tied into a, a, um, a, and a, way of thinking and working and living as we like to at times say that we are. What I'm saying is that I, I learned to be patient. I just don't see why anybody should learn to be patient if that is what is required to get a certain thing done to the best of its needs and your abilities. of making a painting is is really saying that you're wanting to talk to somebody the, the work is uh, was lack, lacking real focus and definition um, the sky to get the effects that I wanted was well, you know what's going to be vague and uh, and the piece of work needed, as it were, tying down somewhere. I think it was Picasso who said that you needed to have a nail in the work to hang from while you looked at it. <laughs> and I try to find in 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 the work 
acts that I do, whether they're small or large, a bit of a nail to hang on to while you look at it. Possibly, I'm a bit silly about it, but I'm very frightened of being formula driven. Uh, and the, the older you get, the more likely it is that the experience that you're calling on um, is, is not perhaps newly looked at enough and it just drops back into a nice comfortable formula that's always worked for you. And this is a, an al also a problem for, for people who work on themes. Now for instance, I'm, I've been doing the uh, what might, might be called a, a mountain series and that I've thought about how the, the mountains uh, that are so magnificent here and so breathtaking came the way that they became the way that they did, got the shapes that they do, what their whakapapa is, what their genealogy is. And so I'll do one, and then I'll follow it with another, and I'll follow it with another, and to me, to me, to me, go on like this. I've got to be certain that I'm not doing it just because the last one uh, looks to me uh, so good. Um, and yet at the same time, I don't want to throw away uh, any sort of insights that I might have been lucky to have achieved um, w you know, when I was doing those. So uh, I think I get a bit paranoid <laughs> about, about formula. I rather love the idea of our Māori artworks being in the great um, centres of the other world, carrying our messages there to a wider world, and being there for when we visited them, and there was there was a bit of home to feel happy beside. Uh, I like to keep the avenues open and um, and build the work up as I go along. <laughs> What you do inside your head is not exactly the way that other people read it. Uh, and that doesn't matter too much. People need to, there need to be, needs to be space in the work for people to read their own understandings. And in that way, not only did the work help you carry your thought forward, with a bit of luck, it's helpful to to people, other people, to carry their thought forward. Because after all, when you're doing something like this, you are externally, externalizing your internal ideas and thoughts. So you're putting them into the public arena. And, um, and so you've got to acknowledge that, that, that the public are going to look at it and and, and get from it a whole lot of different things. But the thing is that it's, when you've done it, it's not yours anymore, it's out there resonating. You walk away and the picture's still there. And, uh, or someone walks away with the picture and, and it's still saying its thing. But it's uh, hopefully got a presence there. And if it hasn't, well, you've just wasted your time. <laughs>